Let's talk about Omicron Protocol, a squad-based minis battling game that uses one of my favorite mechanisms from old school RPGs. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald, and in this episode we're going to talk about a minis battling game that takes place in kind of a cyberpunk, it's got a cyberpunk theme to it, and it's it's really a game that takes some of some of the mechanisms that I used to love from some of the tabletop RPG games that I played in my misspent youth. This is a game called Omicron Protocol by Dead Alive Games. Now this is a review copy that I was given when I was at Breakout in Toronto. So I'm slowly working my way through all the games that I brought home from Breakout. But Omicron Protocol from Dead Alive Games is a game that plays with between one and four players. There are solo rules. There's cooperative rules here as well. Kids age 14 and up can get a handle on this one, and games take about 45 to 90 minutes to play. Let's take a deeper look at Omicron Protocol by Dead Alive Games. This is a game that's medium in terms of its complexity. There's a lot going on here. And younger kids are going to have a hard time, I think, wrapping their heads around the rules. Now, it, it does say age 14 and up, and that makes sense. And the themes, I think some of the, the characters in the game are probably more for, for a teenage crowd. But because there are co-op rules, you might be able to play with a 12-year-old as long as you're choosing the right scenario and the right characters. Um, there, there are a lot of rules to keep track of here. But they've got lots of reference books. So you've got the solo rules here. You've got... Uh, how to play, you've got quick start rules. I mean, look at these books. They're, you've got a lot of stuff that gets packed into that box. Luckily, there's a good organizer that keeps it all together. The box does close once you've unpacked everything, as long as you put everything away right. Now, the goals in this game, the victory conditions are scenario-based. So there are a number of different scenarios that come in the box, uh, and they they include some cards here. So one of the rules has all of the scenarios. It's in, in large print with a great big picture of how the board should be set up. But you also have these cards just to act as a reminder of what all the special mechanisms are. There, there's This is pretty small print, but it's larger print in the actual rule book. So this is going to tell you how you're going to win the game. What do your characters need to do in order to reach those victory conditions? And there are piles of scenarios, there's piles of characters, and you're assembling a squad of four figures in this game. One of the things I was most excited about is that you've got a Mountie here from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And as a Canadian gamer, I'm always <laughs> excited to see some uh, Canadian elements in these games. This isn't a Canadian game by any means, but we do have a Mountie uh, who's got a horse that he's riding on, so he's he's got some good abilities. This is a great big figure here compared to the the small the other smaller characters on the board uh, the the base game comes with two factions so very often you're going to be splitting up between peacekeepers and survivalists i think there's an expansion that has an additional faction and there's some characters that can that are neutral that can play on either one though but the, in in the box it comes with survivalists and peacekeepers and usually that's going to be one team against the other. Now in a two-player game you're going to be controlling all four of your characters on your squad. Uh, if you're playing with four players you're going to split them up between the two of you. You're splitting up your action points as well. So you set up the board based on the scenario. Like I said there's a little map that shows you where everything should go. You've got these characters and the character cards are wipe off cards as well. So you're tracking health and abilities and things like that. You've got dry erase markers that came in the box. So everything is on these little cards that you need to know about. I'll, I'll put one up here. So maybe you'll be able to, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that on the camera, but uh, you've got all the information you need. There's a little backstory on one side of the card. The other side has, well, what can you spend your dice on and what abilities does that character have? You start each round with a certain number of action points and then players are going to alternate between activating their characters and spending those points. You can spend up to four points on a single action, but everyone has to activate in the round. Things like just walking, moving around the board uh, are usually going to be free actions, uh, so you don't have to spend action points on those unless you're trying to run really fast and then you can boost your, your walk speed a little bit by spending an action point on that. 
a lot of the things that the figures can do in this game make noise, EM noise it's called, and that's going to attract these yellow minis. These are called Sims. This is a neutral squad. They're kind of like zombies, cybernetic mutant so sociopaths, I think is what Sim stands for. They're much more like psychopaths, but I guess simp would not be a, a good name for a character in a game. Uh, but you've got these, these zombie type characters. This is a neutral third faction and each time your characters activate they're going to make noise. So if I've got say my horse who's running across the board here with the Mountie, he's going to generate some noise. There's a little EM noise die that goes with that miniature and then that number is going to dictate how far away these Sims characters are going to hear you from and then those guys are going to activate and move towards the character that made that noise. It really does ramp up in terms of the number of these sims that are on the board because once you've done your action each character is going to activate one of these sims that's close to it and then at the end of the round based on the amount of noise you've made more sims are going to spawn in. Spawn in. And then on top of that each round has like a, another level, <laughs> another number of sims that are going to be added to the board. So your noise is going to generate these zombie characters that are coming after you and then each round more and more of these things are going to pop up as well and so they're going to get in the way probably of the objective that you're trying to accomplish and they're attacking your characters and doing damage along the way. The sims are, well they have certain rules in terms of how far they're going to move and which way they're going to move but they are controlled by the opposing characters. So if I'm the peacekeepers here and my mounty is running like this, my opponent the survivalist is going to be rolling the dice for any sims that might attack it along the way. And one of my favorite things, well I think my 100% my favorite thing about this game is the combat. So Lance here has an attack of four. He's got a pistol that he can fire if he wants to do a ranged attack against a sim. If his sim is next to him, he can use his lance. He actually, Lance does have a lance that he can use. All of these attacks do make noise though, but he has an attack of four. I'm going to roll these four dice. And then this little box on my character card is the store where I'm going to, to basically spend my successful rolls on activating some ability. So if I was attacking with my gun, uh, I could spend one success to do one damage to whoever I was attacking. There's little blood drops here underneath. Uh, there are other abilities that they can activate as well by spending those successful dice. Maybe I can stun another character. There's some, some figures here in the box that could set things on fire or you know there's all kinds of different things you can do. You can sneak around and move after your attack so that you're getting out of range. Uh, there's so many things you can do but you're doing that by spending these successful die rolls and since these little sims maybe only have a dex of three it's going to be pretty easy to hit them. You can also use successful dice to buy luck. There are little luck counters that look like four leaf clovers. I had one here on the board. I don't know where it went. So you've got luck counters that you can use uh, and, and those will allow you to change the value of a die on a later turn. Uh, but you're kind of alternating between the two teams. You're alternating between activating a character. The sims will then activate if they've heard you move. Then the next player activates his character and it's going to go back and forth or around the table like that. Once all the characters have done all their actions and your action points are spent, then the round ends. You're going to uh, have sims attacking you based on the amount of noise that you made during your turn and then some more sims are going to spawn in and attack and then the round ending sims are going to spawn in and attack and you count up whether you've earned your victory points or not and you go from there. Now you, you've also got, I didn't even mention this, um, each of the squads has a special ability, survivalists and peacekeepers, and, and this is where you keep track of your victory points. Now that is Omicron Protocol in a very small nutshell. Like I showed you, there's multiple rule books and they're <laughs> some, one of them in particular is quite thick because it has references for everything. Uh, I didn't even mention that you can spend action points to forage for gear. So there's stuff that you can find that you can spend later and give you some extra points. I mean, there's a lot going on here, but what skills are you practicing when you're playing a game like Omicron Protocol, where you're, you're doing these squad-based battles? 
I mean, spatial skills are involved here because you are calculating, well, what's the range of my weapons and can I get my character close enough and do I need to run? And uh, if I do run, is that going to trigger an attack of opportunity? Uh, if that character is in cover, then I'm going to lose one of my attacking dice in my dice pool. So there's all kinds of little things to consider that are just based on the spaces around the board. Do I want to finish my turn too close to a spawn point where more sims are going to come and attack me uh, at the end of the round? You're also, there's a lot of budgeting here. You're starting the round with only a, a few action points to spend uh, and then you're also spending the dice in your dice pool. So whenever you are um, planning ahead so you've got that long-term goal of meeting the victory conditions. You've got the short-term goal of getting your character where you want it to go. Maybe you, need, you might need to pick up and deliver something along the way. Uh, and then you've got the goal of protecting your character as well. So there is some planning. There's a lot of budgeting too. And whenever you're doing planning and budgeting, all of these strategy games involve uh, a skill or a set of skills called the executive functioning skills. These are the, the abilities that you need to work towards a goal and that does include planning and being organized and budgeting uh, how you're spending things. Now, of course it's a strategy game so it is designed to use those spatial skills, those executive functioning skills, but the other thing maybe this is just by the nature of the fact that there's some simulation kinds of elements, some, some strategic combat elements here, there's a memory component to Omicron protocol as well. There are a lot of rules here when it comes to combat and each of the characters has these special abilities. Maybe they can hide, maybe they can be only be targeted if somebody's close by because they're sneaky. Maybe they can steal things, maybe you're set on fire, maybe you're stunned and you have to... There's a lot of things to keep track of here and a lot of things to remember even in terms of the combat rules. If I start my turn and I'm next to one of these guys I'm engaged with, one of the sims or an opposing character and I move out of the way, that's going to trigger an attack of opportunity. If I'm trying to uh, attack someone who's standing on some sh small cover, tall cover is going to block your line of sight. So there's a whole, all kinds of things that you have to keep track of here. So there is a memory component in addition to the more strategic elements of the game. Final thoughts though about Omicron Protocol. Um, well, I mean, this is a thematic cyberpunk style game and it does have those uh, that extra faction that, that keeps attacking every round and that, that grows in population uh, as you're playing through. The factions feel totally different in this game, which is great. So you've got these peacekeepers, the police kind of, uh, and often they've got powerful weapons, but they're, they're, their weapons are quite noisy. And so they're going to attract a lot more attention from those sims, whereas the survivalists, maybe they don't do as much damage, but they tend to be more sneaky uh, in, in terms of how, how you're going to play through the game. So you're going to use very different strategies. And there are a variety of characters in the box, uh, you know, a whole pile of characters. Now the sims are all pretty much the same. Um, the, there are multiple different models of these little sims, uh, but the, the other minis, and they've got this great big mounty, of course, uh, are quite different and their abilities are quite different. Um, you can really create teams that are quite variable in that with uh, characters that work together well maybe to achieve whatever your scenario goal is. Um, I've, I do love the combat though. You know, rolling handfuls of dice because you've got a really high attack and on a particular turn maybe you'll spend a forage card to increase your attack somehow. Doing those, uh, those area of, of uh, effect attacks, you know, throwing a Molotov cocktail or having a big shotgun that has a spread that's going to knock some people down. I, I mean, that is, I, it's a cool mechanism. It's something that I, I really loved in those old school RPGs from, from when I was younger. Rolling handfuls of dice is fun, let's face it. And then you get to spend those dice. I ha You're not wasting your successes. So that's something else that I really thought was cool about this game. Um, it does make the combat pretty accessible and it's pretty straightforward, except that there are several things to remember when it comes to attacks of opportunity and cover and line of fire and uh, all of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, engaging someone who's who's in a battle with a friendly character, you know, that's going to affect your attack as well. But 
you know, that dice pool and spending your successful dice, you can gauge how much damage you want to do, uh, and you may, might do no damage at all and spend your dice to buy more luck for next time instead. Depends on what your goal is in that game. Um, another thing I didn't even mention when, when I was talking about the rules, when your characters get down to zero health, they're not eliminated. There's no player elimination in this game, and player elimination is a mechanism that I don't like very much, so I was really happy to see that that's not the case here. Uh, certain things happen once you get knocked out, but you're certainly far from being out of the game. And that's really important, especially in a game where you're going to be swarmed by these sims that are, are going to be attacking your characters along the way. I also, I mean, I like these character cards. Uh, the wipe-off cards, I think, are a great idea. I've seen more and more games that are using these wipe-off and dry erase markers. Um, I think that those th th that's a good way to keep track of things, and it does keep everything in one spot, and you're just checking things off as you go. Uh, it makes the game easier uh, to keep track of, and it's, it's more organized, I think. There's less writing. You're just kind of crossing off pips when it comes to your health or, or which tactics you've used through the game. Sometimes there are a limited, a limited number of times that you can do something. You're keeping track of your victory points as you go and how many characters you've knocked out. Um, so, I, I mean, it's, it's well organized, it's well designed, and it's got that dice pool. And I can't say enough good things about the dice pool mechanism of the game. Are there downsides, though? Well, I, I mean, I think with two players, you're not sharing your characters. So two players instead of four, you've got all the characters and you're doing your own thing. You're not sharing your action points and your characters with another player. So that m might be more fun to just be able to control your whole squad by yourself. Um, but there are cooperative rules as well. So you can still cooperate with somebody else if you wanted to. Um, the, the only real thing that I like, if you like these kinds of miniatures battle games, I think that this is a really fun one. Uh, the only real downside that comes to my mind is that in one of the playthroughs there was a specific thing that we were looking for. How do you do something? And I, you, I looked in the rule book and it said see page 20 and I looked at page 20 and that information was not there. And I went to the table of contents in the back of the rule book and it said oh if you're looking for that it's on page 20 but I already had checked there was nothing on page 20 that answered the question that I had. So the rule book, maybe there's, there might be some specific things that uh, maybe the table of contents was designed for a different draft of the book, but certainly the rule book that I had maybe had some typos around where information was, but all the information is there, trust me. Uh, and plus there are lots of, uh, there are some playthrough videos online. I watched the Hungry Gamers playthrough before I played this game. So I have to say, um, this one is a winner if you want to play those miniatures battles. Uh, boy, I love dice pools, and it's something that I'm going to take out when the kids come over so that I can show them how this thing works. Thanks so much to the folks at Dead Alive Games for sending Omicron Protocol my way. If you have any questions or comments, you can, of course, leave them in the comment section below the video, or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. BrainsOnGames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go. Previous ones are up there already. BrainsOnGames is the X handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feeds. So we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time.